things. What thing? <laughs> things, stuff, junk, your life, the world. They're all in trouble. Give <laughs> hey, me fish. Try and take the ball away from me. Well done. Nice play. Thank you, Jilly. People began to starve, so I got started. Oh, you're a real help, Jilly. It was self-defense. Did you ever see Victor when he's starving? <laughs> Mr. Fish is the same way. His whole disposition changes. Yeah? He starts to lose that little sparkle in his eye. You really like him, huh? What else have I got to do? You see on the paint, it's Croy. The dinner's coming. It's about time. I finished all the peanuts, and now I'm down to the shelves. Not eating shelves in the living room. I live here, too, you know. How could I forget? Bernice. She's cooking. Look at this place. Clean it up. But why always me? There's five of us here. Don't remind me. <laughs> hello, sweetheart. Now you say hello. I've been calling you all afternoon. I wasn't home. I know. I'm a detective. <laughs> but you can relax now. You're off duty. Yeah, look at this place. It's no wonder things are lost. I had some errands. If you tell me what you're looking for, I'll help you find it. I'm not looking for a peanut butter sandwich on a couch. <laughs> hey! I missed that. <laughs> Bill, please. Whatever it is, we'll find it. It can't be that bad. Remember about two years ago, the Willie Benson case? No. Neither do I. And I have to testify against them on Monday. Why do they wait two years? Because Benson probably got a very expensive lawyer, and he's going to get me on the stand and make a monkey out of me. What is it you need? I need a DD5 file with my reports and pictures and fingerprints, everything. Please, could you talk about it after dinner? <laughs> None of that, whatever you're doing in this house. Skateboarding. Uh, who cares? <laughs> could I have my allowance, Mr. Fish? There won't be any allowances for anybody this week. What? And you'll all start acting like ladies and gentlemen. Look at this place. It's a pigsty. No allowance. Hey, look, we're entitled to that money. Call the cops. <laughs> Please. Hey, Victor Crutch, it on back. I don't need your handouts. What did I do to deserve this? Oh, Phil, at this time of the day, this is what it's like in every house in America. <laughs> you'll find the fire, and you'll be a wonderful witness. Don't cheer me up, Bernice. It depresses me. Yesterday, because when I tried to kiss you, you said, not now, Bernice, this is an important file, and you'll bend it. <laughs> so you took it with you to the precinct. Right. Why don't you go sit in your chair, make yourself comfortable, and try to retrace your steps? I'll try to retrace my steps. That's a good idea, Phil. <laughs> I know I had it when I went into the precinct. I said, hello, Bonnie. 
And Barney said, hello, fish. You look tired. <laughs> Hello, Harris. That's Mike, sir. And Harris said, hello. You look tired. I'm gonna go to bed till nine. Yes, sir. And I went into the bathroom. I looked in the mirror. I looked tired. Why don't you not I'm sorry, Mr. Fish. I didn't mean to yell. Where is Kreutzer? I ain't killing myself around here so he can get his allowance. <laughs> We're all so busy cleaning up around here. Uh, could you move your feet, Mr. Fish? Go vacuum someone else. <laughs> Hi, Bernice. I saved a plate for you in the oven. Oh, no, that's okay. I grabbed something at class break. Maybe just a glass of juice. The power of the unconscious. Why do I want juice? You thirsty? <laughs> Every day when I came home from school, a glass of juice. My mother damaged me in many ways, but she always worried about my body. <laughs> Did you happen to see a file folder around here marked Willie Benson? Mr. Fish has to testify in court Monday, and he misplaced it. <laughs> we don't misplace things, Bernice. And we subconsciously put them where we don't want to find them. Oh, he's always misplacing things. How many times this week has he lost his house keys? <laughs> I see what you mean. I got up from my desk. I went to the bathroom again. Take a look. It's a dollhouse, like a commercial. You could see yourself in the coffee table. <laughs> so how about our allowances? I said one week, and I'm a man of my word. Robert Young would have given it to us. We liked everybody. <laughs> Mr. Fish could change his mind at any time. <laughs> but not right now. <laughs> Don't you understand? I do gotta have bread in his pocket. What a bummer. I wanted to go to the Star Trek convention. Hey, what, what's the matter? What, what do you need? Three, five? <laughs> no, kid. No, I can't pay you back for a while. Hey, you ain't gotta pay me back. But, uh, I wouldn't mind a little help making my bed for the next few weeks. Sure. Be my thrill. <laughs> hey, uh, Give my regards to the guy with the funny ears. <laughs> Good evening, Phil. May I talk to you? You just did. Uh, look, I understand there's a folder that might be missing, and I want to help. Just think of your subconscious as a giant computer. If you push the right button, you'll find that folder. Possibly under G, for guilt. <laughs> or uh, F, for fear. Uh, you're worried about reprisals. Try S, for scram. <laughs> hey, Mr. Fish. You know some you're really shaping the kids up here. <laughs> Uh, your mother? Fish. Uh, you know that Benson file? Yeah. Look under... under G. <laughs> and under F. Never mind why. Your bed's made, your math homework's done, and I got the secret sauce stain off your sweatshirt. Good God. I still think you should have given me more than 50 cents for that math homework. I mean, that isosceles triangle stuff is murder. <laughs> Join the union. <laughs> hey, Michael, buddy. Got plans for tomorrow night? Well, I thought I'd have a filet mignon on top of the World Trade Center. <laughs> and maybe I'll go catch a Broadway show. What's say mean you go hang around by the pizza parlor? 
Forget it, man. Hey, I'm buying. Two guys like us, we could get lucky. You ain't gonna get that lucky. <laughs> hey, Jilly. Come here. I got you something. What, did somebody die and leave you a million bucks? Hey, I got a job working. It's delivering. Sure. Take the envelope off of this guy. Bring it to this guy, and they pay me 10 bucks. What's in the envelope? Sandwiches. <laughs> What's in your belly flip? You know that? It's the charm bracelet you want. You're walking around here like you're King Kong. It's all bought and paid for. Well, I ain't. Loomis, isn't Victor supposed to be cleaning the floor in here now? Yep. Then why are you doing it? Friendship. Friendship? And a dollar. A dollar? Loomis, he's exploiting you. Uh, can't you see that? You shouldn't let this happen. Your people have been exploited for centuries. And now we're getting even. <laughs> this job's only worth 50 cents. <laughs> Went into the liquor store. Phil? Benson was at the counter. I think he was sort of dark and nervous. But he wasn't wearing glasses. Phil, I have something urgent to talk to you about. Take off your glasses. I think you ought to know that Victor is paying the other kids to work for him. Walk towards the couch. I can't even see the couch. I think he was a tall blonde. Phil, we have a problem here. We've got five of them. It's Victor. He's becoming a monster. What do you mean he's becoming? You don't understand. He's paying the other kids to do his scheduled chores. Now, I can't blame them for seeking employment, but that's the free enterprise system. Where is he getting the money? Well, that's not really the point. See, the problem is, he's destroying the ecology of the housework dynamic. What does that mean? He's taking over. <laughs> we may have to have an encounter. That's exactly what I had in mind. That one, Victor. I want to talk to you. I'll catch you later, Phil. Go. No catching, no running, no fills. Get over here. <laughs> What do you got in your hand? No. The other hand. See? No. All right, go on. I don't want to go now. <laughs> don't he need a search warrant for this? He lives here. Betting cards. You're a bag man. Who are you running for? I ain't gonna tell you nothing. You're gonna tell me here, or you're gonna tell me in the precinct? I don't care what you do. You can get your fire hoses and turn them on me. I still won't talk, because I ain't a rat. Fire hoses? <laughs> I couldn't find Victor anywhere. Look in your subconscious under P for punk. Phil, somewhere out there in, in those dark, mean streets is a frightened, lonely little boy. Well, don't let him in. We got enough. Don't distance me with that sardonic wit. This is serious. He doesn't understand. By now, he's convinced you're going to send him back to the children's center. So what doesn't he understand? <laughs> Why do I always find you doing the dishes? It was Victor's turn. Poor kid. 
Now, somehow, we failed him. Oh, Charlie. We've only had two weeks to try to change 14 years. We mustn't take these things personally. I can't help it, Bernice. I mean, it's a part of my character. For months, I went around feeling personally responsible for Watergate. <laughs> Tape recorders. Mm, there's a lot more than that. No, no, no. Frida married that boy in tape recorders. What? That was the night. Bernice? I got it. Benson was the man you arrested the night of my cousin Frida's wedding. I remember it all clearly. You do? Of course. How could I forget a thing like that? Well, start me off. Give me the details. It'll come back to me. Right. I was wearing that blue dress. <laughs> the one with the white collar and cuffs. The one you always said made me look pale. Okay, Bernice, go on. All evening long, everybody kept saying, where's Phil? Where's Phil? Yeah, yeah. And, and where was I? <laughs> Remember when you came in, they were cutting the cake. You'd already missed the filet of sole, which was overcooked, and I knew you wouldn't like it anyway. Oh, wow. I could tell by looking at your face across the room that something terrible had happened. I rushed across the floor. I said, Phil, you look so tense. My God, what happened? Tell me. And what did I say? You said what you always say. <laughs> I don't want to talk about it, Bernice. And you let me get away with that? <laughs> well, I said what I always say. Maybe if you shared some of these things with me, it would help. And then what did I say? You said what you always say. <laughs> I'm trying to protect you, Bernice. It's a jungle out there. That's all I said? That's all you always said. You're in trouble. I ain't sweating it. The fish, I got something to say. I'm listening. I ain't gonna rat. You might as well send me back to the center. I'll decide when you go back. I can't make my mind up about nothing in this place, not even about getting thrown out. <laughs> hey, hey, Victor, glad you're here. I sense a lot of hostility in this room. Go away. Yeah, but you, know, you two are really very much alike. It's the historic clash of male egos. Victor has his code. I gave my word. He gave his word. I have an obligation to uphold the law. He has an obligation to uphold the law. <laughs> yeah? Well, what do you want me to be, a stoolie? The stoolie is a vital part of police work. Yeah? And what are you thinking of? Not much. Listen, I can't win either way. But if I had a gun and a badge, I just might be able to beat you. Look, what if Victor agreed never to go near that bookie again? How could I trust him? I don't say nothing unless I mean it. So it's a deal? A deal. A deal. Okay. If you want a job, get a paper out. You'll need the money. For what? College? Lawyers and bail bondsmen. <laughs> you see? He hates me. He's always put me down. <laughs> Phil, Victor thinks you hate him. Say something nice. I don't hate you. Any more than the others. You see? Now look, Victor, 
you say something nice to Mr. Fish. You know something, Mr. Fish? You got a nice wife. <laughs> hey, why don't you two shake hands? Hello? Yes, this is Sergeant Fish. That's right, I'm supposed to testify in the Benson case on Monday. But, but, uh, I, I'm not feeling too well. <laughs> they did? Well, you tell the DA for me that I don't believe in, in, in plea bargaining. I spent a lot of time reconstructing the events of that arrest. <laughs> It was a liquor store on 49th Street. Benson was a redhead. He was wearing a blue jacket, you know, one of those new double knits, a red turtleneck sweater, and he had a, a little mole under his right eye. Phil, you remembered? And then he, he moved his left and drew a, a pearl handle Saturday night special. And then what happened? I don't want to talk about it, Bernice. It's a jungle out there. <laughs> Of course, it's a jungle in here, too. <laughs> well, I'm splitting. Who's the lucky one? Nancy Cuccinello. She sounds like a nice girl. Yeah? <laughs> Did you hear something? <laughs> well, have a good night. And don't wait up for me. I couldn't possibly. Have a good time. Sure, you're not her mother. Well, Phil, they've all gone out. Except you and me. I know. <laughs> How long has it been since we've gone out? 1967. <laughs> Started just like this. Came in with a newspaper, and you had that big smile. And the movie stank. <laughs> I'll go get my needlepoint. <laughs> 